Hello, welcome to Reso Coder. In this tutorial, you will learn how to create a simple Android app in Kotlin. We are gonna use Android Studio 3.0 or later because that has Kotlin support already built in. Whether you already know how to make Android apps in Java or you are just starting out, I'm sure you will learn a lot from this tutorial. By the end of this tutorial, you will know how to create this kind of app. You can drag the seek bar and the text is going to change and also the text view is gonna be animated. This text view reflects the current progress which is on the seek bar. Then when you click the reset button it's going to nicely animate and come back to the starting position. So where to start? Let's create a new project and make sure that you include Kotlin support right here. Click on next. We wanna support KitKat and higher so click next again. We wanna select empty activity. And now finally click on finish. Once we are in our project, I would say we should create a layout for the main activity. So let's click on activity main.xml. We already have a constraint layout as the root element of the layout, which is a nice thing. It means we won't have to write almost any code. We wanna go to the designer down here. Now select this text view and move it up a bit. Then comes the seek bar, so we wanna select it and drag it right here. We want to anchor it to the text view and from the left, right and bottom it's going to be anchored to the constraint layout itself. And actually let's move this text view down a bit and let's make this seek bar bigger. Then finally comes the button. The top should be anchored to the seek bar and the rest will be anchored to the constraint layout. And also let's move this button a bit up. Now let's switch to XML. We want to change the ID of the text view to say something a bit more meaningful like for example text view progress. The default text will be 0 and text size will be 60 SP. Now let's find the button. But first we can see here that we have an error. That is because we changed the ID of the text view but this seek bar is anchored to it. So we need to change the name of the anchor as well. So this will be text view progress. And the ID of the button will be button reset and it's gonna say reset. Alright, now that we have the layout, let's get to the actual Kotlin code. I'm not gonna go over all of the things that Kotlin has to offer, but I will try to explain everything you need to know. First up, after setting the content view, let's create a variable. Since we want to animate the text view and move it up according to the current progress of the seek bar, we should keep track of the initial position of the text view so that we can later move it back to where it started. We will translate the text view along the y axis, so let's create a val initial text view translation y. So what is this val thingy? It says that this variable is immutable, meaning it cannot be changed later. If you want to create a mutable variable, use the var keyword instead. But this should be immutable. And this variable is gonna be equal to text view progress. And yes, no find view by ID nonsense like in Java. We can refer to views by their IDs directly from the code. And we wanna get the translation Y. Next, we wanna listen to the changes of seekbar. So seekbar dot set on seekbar change listener. And we need to specify an on seek bar change listener. Since this listener has multiple functions, yes, that's how they are called in Kotlin, we need to do this in a way that is very similar to Java's anonymous classes. Kotlin also supports setting the listener to be a lambda, but that is only possible if the listener has only one function. So what we need to write here is object. And this object should implement seek bar dot on seek bar change listener to curly braces. Now click on this red squiggly line and we have a red light bulb over here and we want to implement members. We want to select all of them and click on OK. We can delete all of these to do's and we are actually interested only in this on progress change function. Here we want to set the text views text to be equal to the current progress of the seek bar. So text view progress dot text is equal to progress dot to string. Next up, we want to animate the text view. First, we want to create an immutable variable, so val, translation distance, and this name speaks for itself, and this is going to be equal to initial text view translation y plus progress times anim step, we are going to define this in just a bit, times minus 1. This is because negative y is actually upwards. So what's up with anim step? 
we need to define this anim step in a way that is resolution independent. Well, we could calculate resolution independent values right inside this code. The simplest way to do this is to create a diamonds.xml file. So let's click on app, res, values, right click on values. We want to create a new value resource file. It's going to be called diamonds, which is short for dimensions. And now click on OK. And here we want to define a diamond. Its name is going to be text anim step. And this is going to be 5dp, which are density independent pixels. Let's go back to the main activity Kotlin file. And here we want to get the actual anim step. We can get it by calling resources dot get dimension. And the dimension is located under r dot diamond dot text anim step. Cool. And now we want to call animate on text view progress. And we want to animate translation Y by translation distance. Awesome. And now let's do something with the reset button. We want to set its on click listener. This is where we can utilize a lambda, although doing it the Java way is entirely possible as well. So down here, we want to write button reset dot set on click listener. And we could do it manually, but I'm just going to hit control space and enter. So this is a lambda and this V parameter is of type view. We could even write it explicitly, but why even bother? And here we want to set seek bar progress to be zero. So seek bar dot progress is equal to zero. And we also want to animate text view progress. We want to set the duration of the animation to be equal to 500. We want to rotate the text view around. So rotation by 360 F, which is one full circle. And also we want to animate translation Y. And that is going to be equal to initial text view translation Y. So basically we want to move it to where it started and also rotate it. And let's test this. All right. So we can drag the seek bar and it's going to be animated nicely. But as you can see, we should actually put some limit to how much progress there can be on this seek bar because this text view can go out of bounds. So let's go to activity main.xml and on the seek bar set Android max to be equal to 10. Now let's test it again. And this is much better. We can reset the text view and we can actually reset it again and again and again and yet again. And this actually makes no sense. While we can do the animation here, the user can spam the reset button even after the progress has been reset and make the text view animate over and over just like we did. So let's copy this bit of code, delete it from here and put it inside on progress changed. And do you see this boolean from user? This indicates whether the progress was changed by a user or by a function call. And since in the onclick listener of the button, we are setting the seek bars progress to be zero programmatically, this is going to trigger this on progress changed function, but from user will be false because it was actually not from user. It was from this bit of code. So over here, we can just check if not from user, and then we can run this animation and let's test it again. The seek bar works just as before, which is perfect. And when we click on reset now, and now let's click on it again, and it's not going to do a thing. So that's how you can create a simple Android app in Kotlin. To get the code written in this tutorial, click on the link in the video description, which is going to take you to resocoder.com. If this video helped you and you learned something new about Kotlin, give it a like and also share it. If you don't want to miss more videos like this, subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell button. Leave a comment, follow me on social media and see you in the next video.